Hey everybody, welcome back to the Wolf Pit. Today, we're smoking up some sweet and tangy, melts in your mouth, St. Louis cut pork spare ribs. And if you noticed, I didn't say fall off the bone spare ribs. And that's because I like my ribs tender, but not overcooked to the point the meat falls off the bone, and you can't pick up the rib and eat it like you're supposed to eat a rib, off the bone. Ribs that are falling off the bone are simply overcooked, but I know a lot of people like them like that. There's a fine line to ribs being perfectly cooked and ribs being overcooked. You should be able to take a nice clean bite of meat off the ribs without having to chew the meat off the bone or all the meat falling off the bone. And hopefully, that's what I'm going to show you how to do today. So let's get started and I'll show you how I make melt in your mouth sweet and tangy spare ribs on the Lone Star Grill's mini insulated cabinet smoker. I had a whole lot of leftover miscellaneous charcoal from previous cooks that I'm going to use for this cook along with some new lump. I'm going to light the charcoal on the left hand side which is where our 2 inch ball valve is which is our air intake. The more it's open, the more air goes in, the hotter your fire gets. The less it's open, the cooler it gets. So during the initial lighting, we want the ball valve open 100% for maximum airflow. Once you have a small bed of coals lit, add your wood chunks. Today I'm using a mix of hickory and apple. The Lone Star Mini can be used as a dry smoker or a water smoker. For this cook, I'm going to use it as a water smoker. Add a couple of gallons of water through the fill line at the top of the Mini, which then transfers the water down to the water pan. You don't have to use the fill line initially at the top of the cooker. You could just pour the water in the pan while the grill is empty. But the fill line is super convenient when the Mini is loaded with meat and hot. You can add water without opening the cooker, which every time you open the cooker, you lower your temperatures and extend the cooking time. Once you have a nice bed of coals going and your water's been added, close the mini and leave your ball valve and top vent open 100% until you reach around 200 degrees. Then shut the ball valve down 75% and the top vent 75%. And then let the mini cruise along until it settles in between 250 and 275 degrees. While the mini's coming up the tip, let's get our ribs ready. Here I have two racks of St. Louis cut spare ribs that I'm going to rub down with Suckle Buster's Hog Waller Pork and Rib Rub, which is actually a fantastic pork rub. And no, Suckle Buster's is not a sponsor. I just love their products. It's all high quality and good stuff. I'm only going to season the meat side of the ribs, because as I mentioned in every rib video, I don't remove the membrane. I believe the membrane helps retain moisture and helps hold the ribs together. And personally, I love the chewy and somewhat crunchy membrane of the finished ribs. You could rub these a couple hours before and stick them in the fridge or even up to overnight before cooking, but these are going right on the mini after they're rubbed. If you've already noticed from some of the footage, I cooked these ribs along with the brisket in the brisket video. If you missed that video, check it out up here. So close up the mini and let it roll and do its thing. After four hours, the ribs were looking super sexy with a very nice even pullback which indicates a nice uniform temperature in the mini, no hot or cold spots. The water pan is doing its thing, boiling and providing lots of steam to our meat. I close up the mini and let the spare ribs go for another hour. After five hours total, our spare ribs were ready to be sauced. And I'm going to sauce these with another Suckle Busters product, their Honey Barbecue Glazed and Finishing Sauce, which is phenomenal on pork and equally good in a shot glass. Simply brush on a nice even thin layer of this liquid gold, and just like the rub, I'm only going to sauce the meat side. Just look at the color these ribs have. It doesn't get much better than that. I was going to leave this rack of ribs unsauced, but my guests requested sauced, so you get it your way at the wolf pit. Once all the ribs are sauced, 
close the mini and let the ribs go for another 20 to 30 minutes until the sauce sets. After five and a half hours, our St. Louis cut spare ribs are done. And unfortunately, I have the worst lighting possible, which I do apologize to you, the people. You, the people, deserve better lighting. The lighting doesn't do these ribs justice, but the show must go on. As you can see, the ribs were super tender, but still had some integrity to them to stay on the bone. These ribs were super sweet, smoky, tangy, and juicy, but more importantly, they were absolutely delicious. I hope you guys get a chance to try these ribs. Thank you all very much for watching. Please don't forget to like this video and subscribe and I'll see you soon.